Hello, class. Welcome to week one lecture. In this lecture, we're going to take a look at some of the preliminary stages of design. So things that you do before you begin designing, and then how you segue into the design, things you do during the design process, and then ways to prepare your design for viewing. So let's just go ahead and start right out with, with some steps that you need to take before you begin to design. So the first thing we, we have to decipher is what do you want to say? Now, my recommendation here for any um, any advertising design or any design in general, for that matter, is to start with a sketchbook. Um, you know, I, I think that a lot of successful designers will attest to the value of sketching. Um, and I'll be honest with you, a lot of design students um, are, are developing um, their, their value associated with sketching. So I, I think that in, in this class, I really want to reinforce the importance of sketching uh, in, in order to cultivate your ideas. Now, before you begin to design, you have to decipher what do you want to say. So what, do you, what is it, what is the message that you're developing in, in, in the design? Um, the next thing you want to do is, and now these two can go hand in hand. Now, this, this can actually go uh, before the first one, but these two go hand in hand. So what do you want to say and who do you want to say it to? This is called the target audience and it is of critical importance in, in any design project. I'll be honest with you, most students um, are too broad in their target audience. And I often use this example for a target audience. Okay, suppose, um, you speak, um, suppose somebody speaks fluent French, okay, and they walk into a bar in Cleveland, Ohio, and they order a, a an appetizer and a drink in French, right? And the bartender's not going to understand a word they're saying, well, presumably not going to understand a word they're saying. The people in the bar, nobody's there, people are going to look at this person and go, what? Why? Because that the, the individual has not defined their target audience. You need to communicate with your target audience, okay? The first step in communicating with, with the target audience is defining that target audience, okay? So if our Frenchmen were to have accurately defined the target audience, they would have realized that the target audience is English-speaking people in, a, uh, in Cleveland, Ohio. Therefore, the message would have been fine-tuned for the, the expeditious acceptance of that message from the target audience, okay? So what we want to say and who we want to say it to are two of the most critical foundational cornerstones in all of design, specifically advertising. Um, then you got to kind of start to visualize, like, what do I want the ad to look like, okay? Do I want it to be long and wide? Do I want it to be short and fat? Um, do I want to use images? Do I want to use illustrations? Do I want it to be comical? Do I want it to be serious? Um, and so on and so forth. And of course, again, these, this question, it relates to the target audience as, as well as the message. Um, and then you, you, you have to decide, well, how do you want to get where you're going? Okay, so you, 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 you've deciphered what you want to say. You know who you want to say it to. You've got a good idea of what you want the um, message to look like. Now you just kind of kind of go plan the roadmap. Okay, how do I get from where I'm at to where I want to be? Okay, now these are just basic steps. This is by no means a comprehensive list, but these are basic steps to um, consider before you begin getting a design. Now, let's go back to what you want to say. So what do you want to say and, and basically how do you want to say it? So when you decide what you want to say, you want to decipher the words and or visual element. So you got to start thinking about writing copy. A lot of times designers will be supplied with copy and a lot of times that will come in, in form of a, a simple Word document. And it's up to us to really decipher exactly how we want to present this information. What is the hierarchy? What are the most important goals? All right. I'm sorry, the most important facts, uh, then secondary and tertiary facts. And then we can start assembling with that in mind. Now, we need to have very concrete goals in, in, in our, our design process. So in other words, what are we trying to accomplish? OK, and then, of course, my recommendation and all all professional designers are, I, I promise you, are going to recommend the same thing. Keep it super simple. The KISS, when you hear KISS, K-I-S-S, -S, there's other uh, variations of this acronym, but I think this one is the most politically correct. And, and what does this mean? This means keep it super simple. That means that 
simplicity in design is 10 times out of 10 going to be your best solution. Okay, so uh, there's a couple of design principles. One is called um, Hicks Law, and the other is called Occam's Razor. And, and these both point to simplicity in design, and they both point to this. Uh, Hicks Law basically says that if you add something to a composition or in any design, let's say you're, you're a fashion design, you're designing a, a men's suit, okay, if whenever you add something, you're taking away from what's already there. So in, in an advertising design, if you want to start adding different embellishments and this and that, understand that what you add is going to take away from what's already there. Okay, and that's a, a synopsis of Hicks Law. The other one is Occam's Razor, and this one is really fascinating, but basically the premise in Occam's Razor is, and, and its relation to, to, to keep it, to keep the KISS method, keep it super simple, is that Occam's Razor dictates that the simple solution is 10 times out of 10 going to be the best solution. Okay, it has to do with response times, reaction times, et cetera, et cetera. And really the propensity of the viewer to want to stay and continue in the composition to gather all of the pertinent information. Okay, now moving forward to deciding who your audience is. And of course, this goes hands in hand in hand with what you want to say, but who your audience is. Um, speak to your intended audience. Remember my example just a couple minutes ago about the Frenchman in Cleveland, Ohio? That's a, a, exactly what this is, is. You need to learn how to speak to the intended audience. Okay, I think it's, I, I think we'll all agree that the way we communicate with a 14 year old um, female middle school cheerleader is going to be completely different than the way that we will uh, craft this, the message to a 58 year old um, uh, uh, professional executive in the business world. Right. Now, my point here is this, is that depending on your target audience, you are going to speak and communicate differently based on the needs, expectations of that target audience. OK, so sometimes your audience is unknown. If your audience is known, you have a great, great advantage because you can decipher how to, to communicate with that audience. If your target audience is unknown, it points to what? And inside your heads, you should be answering that question with the answer research. If you don't know your target audience, you really have to do some studying and determine who your, your unknown target audience is. Um, once you determine a target audience, you, you have to display a little bit of empathy here. You have to put yourself in their shoes while you're designing. It's, it's, it's an abstract thought, but when you can put yourself in the audience's shoes, it will help you as a designer to be able to communicate with that audience. Expectations, right? So once you determine a target audience, you, you know, go ahead and try to put yourself in their shoes while you're designing. Um, and then, of course, pick uh, uh, visual elements that appeals to your target audience. So let's revert back to my example with the uh, the middle school girl and the um, middle aged professional executive. So what elements do you think would appeal to those two target audiences? I think inside your head you should really be thinking about the answers. Um, perhaps um, remedial illustrations with primary colors would be more accessible to a younger audience. Um, more illustration, and then perhaps fit, uh, uh, images would be more appealing to an older that the, the older demographic, right? So what you really want to do is decide, and this is again, these all go hand in hand, guys. So put yourself in their shoes, determining the best best visual elements that appeal to that target audience, and design accordingly, right? Okay, pick a design format. OK, now, again, this is basically a, a we're showing this as a linear process, but this that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't go back and refine. And let's make this a circular process instead of a linear process, because quite often in the design process, we'll go back to earlier steps, refine those steps and implement those steps. So that's why I'm saying let's make it a circular process as opposed to a linear process. Pick a design format space. What is space? Space is where it's going to be viewed. OK, so. It, don't get space confused with environment. Okay, let me use this example. Um, let's say our environment is a hospital. So we're designing a poster for a hospital. Space, the space is where that's going to be placed. Okay, is it going to be in a cafeteria that's well lit? Is it going to be in a hallway underneath a stairway that's not as well lit? And of course, you have to take these considerations 
into mind when designing. Okay, is it going to be viewed at a distance? If so, of course, the type should be bigger, right? Um, size. Size, of course, is, is of critical consideration and has to do with space and environment, right? Shape and orientation. Is it going to be a long um, ad? Is it going to be a tall ad? Is it going to be a narrow ad? And, of course, a lot of this points to the expectations of the target audience and the intended communicative message. Um, environment. That would be the hospital in, in, in that case, right? So where's it going to be viewed? Um, then we have margin. So margins are basically, in, in this example right here, this is a margin right here. It's the distance between where the, uh, the design elements start and the edge of the page. Okay, uh, theoretically, margins should be equal, but that's not a, a, a hard, fast rule. Um, we have four margins associated with every, every page. We have a top margin, bottom margin, left and right margins. Uh, we have columns. What are columns? Columns, this is a column right here. Okay, if there was another set of type next to this, it would be another column. So quite often we, we determine the use of columns. Let's use typography for an example, okay? So if we have a type section that's really, really long, Okay, maybe it would be, be best to, to ice to uh, uh, um, format that in two shorter columns than one longer selection. Do you see what I'm saying? So that is the use of columns. And then of course, budget. Budget is, is really has a lot. Um, it, it, it's to a very high degree determines how much time you will spend on each of these individual uh, elements in, in the, the design process. Um, Really, honestly, budget also will affect your design decisions as well. So imagine um, you've got a really high budget ad. Okay, you're gonna and, and it's it's for for, a, for a, like a, like a ultra um, a lug, luxury product. Okay, that approach is going to be different than if you have a really super low budget for um, something that is a, a accessible for for a, a larger swath of the the audience. Okay, so budget will determine your design decisions. Okay, let's move on. Hints for effective copywriting. This is copywriting, guys. W-R-I-T-I-N-G. That's writing. That's written word. Not to be confused with copywriting, C-O-P-Y-R-I-G-H-T, which is uh, which has to do with fair use and and um, and actual and actual copyright law. Okay, so effective copywriting. That's the text. Okay, we have. Headlines, subheads, captions, body text. So headline, I think, is obvious. Subhead is is, is a segue between the, the headline and the body copy. Okay, so copy refers to everything. All the text on a page is called uh, copy. A headline, the words in a headline would be called headline copy, subhead copy, caption copy, and body copy body copy, body text, which is typically referred to as body copy. Um, headline would be the headline of the page. Now think of a newspaper and think of, of um, uh, hierarchy, okay? So, so in a newspaper article, this is the best way to think about this. News, newspaper article, the headline's the largest, okay? Then the subhead's a little smaller, and then the body copy is a little smaller than that. And then the, the, the captions, the captions are something that's pictured next to an image and describing the image. Captions are typically set in, in italic. So the point here is that these are all delineated by different visual characteristics in order to help create hierarchy in your copywriting. Okay. Um, what are you trying to do? I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Feature benefit, AKA call to action. What's in it for the reader? What do you want the reader to take away when they're done looking at your work? Okay, organization and focus for copywriting is, is critical. Um, as I said, a lot of times as a designer, you'll, you will be supplied with the body copy, uh, with the copy for the entire ad. It's just a matter of you to create hierarchy on that copy. But I've had many assignments and projects in the past um, from clients who aren't sure about the copy and they, they've, they've asked me to write copy for them, in which case it points to what? Yes, it's the R word again, guys. It, it, it points to research, okay? Um, to organize and focus your writing, okay? And then overwrite and edit. Of course, that just means really edit. That means edit and, and um, expedite your reading for, for the expeditious um, accessibility from your target audience, okay? Uh, I know I'm throwing a lot of terminology at you guys, but but just if you just kind of follow this in its logical flow, it all makes really good sense. Let's move on to quick guide to design principles. We have um, 
Okay, so emphasis. What is emphasis? Emphasis is a way to create hierarchy. In my newspaper ad page uh, example, the, the, the fact that the headline is the largest, that puts emphasis on the headline and creates hierarchy. Contrast, all hierarchy is based on contrasts. Contrasts are differences in um, uh, 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 tone, color, scale, um, appearance, etc. So a contrast just basically means an extreme difference. Okay, so for example, um, if you have two elements on a page, one is really big and one is really small, the contrast, uh, emph uh, the emphasis is that, it, based on contrast of size, is that the larger piece is more important than the smaller piece. We have balance. Balance is exactly what it sounds like, guys, exactly what it sounds like. It's how a, a composition is balanced. Really simple way to determine balance is this. Is you, it's like a fulcrum, a teeter-totter, right? So the fulcrum's right in the middle, all right? If there's too many elements on one side of the page, it, it looks like it's leaning towards that, that's imbalance. It's as simple as looking at elements on a page and seeing how they're balanced left to right, okay? Um, alignment, a really good tip for student designers is this. In your compositions, specifically in advertising, everything should align with something, specifically type. And we'll start getting into that more and more as we start working, but keep that in mind. Repetition. Um, repetition is a, is a wonderful principle of, of design. And basically, if you're using a design element, use it more than once. If you have a composition and you have an element that is being used only once, my recommendation is to either use it again or get rid of it. Okay, so let's say you have a, a, um, a bullet list. Okay, let's say you have an ad with a bullet list. And in that bullet list, you use one star and the rest are dots. So let's say this was a star right here. Okay, this is, it has to do with, with repetition. Okay, so let's say this uh, icon is a star for this bullet list and the rest are, are circles, right? So that's bad, that's not good repetition. Repetition would indicate they would all be circles. So the anomaly will get rid of that and replace it with something that is repetitive, okay? And then flow is basically how we work through the composition. How does the designer lead us through the composition? Okay, overview of the design process. What are the goals? This has to do with research, guys. Um, what are the goals of, of, of the design? If there are more than one goal, prioritize. Again, it, this points to hierarchy. So this is hierarchy in, in assigning and determining your goals. Who is the target audience? What are special interests do they have? What are their demographic qualities? Um, time, budget, and, and ability. Constraints as they relate to a specific designer. Let's jump over to uh, uh, this. And we're going to end this lecture on, on this little kind of process here as how we present our work, okay? Typically, we'll start with thumbnails, then we'll move to roughs, then we'll move to comps, and then we'll move to our mechanicals. And what does this mean? A, the first, any design process starts with a sketch, okay? And I am a big proponent of sketches. This is an ad I'm working on now for a national magazine, and this is my, bot, this is my notes right here. This is my, I've got probably 20 pages of notes for this ad. And um, basically that's how I start taking notes and doing little quick sketches. There's a bunch of little sketches in here that give me ideas about this ad and what I want to do. So we start with notes and sketches. Then we move into thumbnails. Thumbnails are quick preliminary sketches, quick little ideas, all right? They, they need to show evidence of visual thinking. They need to show variations on a theme, and they need to do different formats and elements. So just kind of organizing your thoughts. Then we have roughs. Roughs are a, 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 a more detailed than thumbnails. They're half, about half the size, or they couldn't be the full size version, but you're working out proportions. You're showing your typographic intent. You're showing placement. You're showing proximity. Um, you're showing repetition. You're showing contrasts. You're showing emphasis. You're showing everything you really want to have an idea about, but it's not an exact replication of what you want the final ad to look like. That's a comprehensive. Comprehensive is, it can be a, a drawing. Well, typically, uh, thumbnails are, are sketches. A rough can be digital. Comps can be digital. And then, of course, mechanicals are digital. So the comp, um, the, the rough is a, is a more detailed version of the thumbnail. 
uh, where you're working out proportions, et cetera. And then we have our comps. And a comp is a, to a very high degree, reflective of the finished product. And this is something you'll present to your client. You'll sell your ideas. There's no missing elements in a comp, okay? Quite often, a client will sign off on a comp, okay? And then we have our mechanicals, and that is camera ready. That's ready for print. Okay. All right, guys. Um, I know I just threw a lot at you, but it's, it's really, really not a difficult process at all. And it really makes sense if you think about it. So um, um, let's go ahead and start thinking about this, this lecture as it relates to your work in week one. And of course, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, if I can provide any clarification for this last 20 minutes, I'm sorry I took so long. Did have a lot to cover. I'm trying to be as thorough as possible. Please let me know. All right. Great. Thank you very much.